Lacrosse, which is rooted in centuries-old North American Indian culture, became a suburban game throughout the East Coast of the United States during the 20th century. Now, the sport continues to evolve, and now it's gaining urban appeal. Joining me for a discussion about lacrosse in the city is Khalid West, co-founder of the Brooklyn Lacrosse Club. Welcome. Thank you. Man, you guys have been doing a heck of a job, especially fitting the game into the city. I mean, it's still the game as far as on the field, but you have something, You have. I was looking at your website, and it's called Asoya, right? Correct. And you played on handball courts. This is correct. And explain that. So Asoya is, um, like you said, uh, a set of games that generally are played on handball courts. And I came up with the concept for the game probably last summer uh, to help alleviate field uh, scarcity. Uh, I'm also the co-founder of Brooklyn Lacrosse Club, and uh, I'm familiar with the administrative side and the headaches and the hassles of acquiring field space. So I... Um, That's a big deal here in the city, yeah. It is, mm -hmm. it is. It's, it's tough. So I, uh, I was at a court one day, and I was, you know, on the wall, which is a, a, a very familiar uh, uh, practicing element for lacrosse players. And I was thinking, like, how do you make this fun? How could you, uh, you know, get some enjoyment out of being here just other than, like, throwing the ball against the wall and catching it? And then I began to, like, think about what it would be like to, to, to have somebody defend you and to try, to try to throw the ball against the wall, catch it, and then get to a certain spot on the court. And, um, I, I got a couple of players together. Uh, we we played a game, the, the idea, and it seemed to engage them, and people wanted to continue to play and figure out how to make it better. And also caught on with the uh, with uh, young people within your organization. Uh, well, yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, you see people playing now. I mean, at this point, playing on the wall much more than they had in the past. Um, we actually happened to practice uh, at Boys and Girls High School. Um, in bed -Stuy. and there we've been there for about four seasons and there's always been a wall or handball courts there but this season people are actually there on their own accord you know by themselves and really in enjoying the, the exercises I mean this is a game basically has always been suburbanized also I don't know they played here in Long Island for years uh, Midwood High School during the 80s, during the 90s, and also even early 2000s, always had a, a great mid, uh, lacrosse team. Uh, pretty good. They won a lot of PSAL championships and that sort of thing. But when you look at what you're doing, you are creating the game for the hood, basically, <laughs> right? I mean, you, you're putting it there you know, on a handball court. You can say that. And, and, and it's almost like what happened with basketball, what happened with football. The game is being tricked out now. Now you're adding a whole new flavor to it. I mean, well, think about it. If you, if you, you know, you seem like a city dweller, and mm -hmm. if you came up in the city or you've been in the city for a while, you notice that there are all of these. Everywhere you look, there's a handball court, but you also notice that there's nobody on those handball courts. That's true, right? <laughs> true. Um, so again, because the 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 sport of lacrosse really uh, has an element to it that involves the wall. Like coaches have all of my career. I mean, I've been playing since uh, the eighth grade. Um, I've always said, you know, make sure you're on the wall, get on, because if you don't have another player to, to throw uh, uh, and pass with and, and catch with, you need to find something to practice your skill. And with the wall, you got to react to the ball wherever the ball wherever the is. ball goes. Right. And the ball, you know, if you know it, it has a really funny bounce to it. Correct. It'll bounce once, and then it'll take off the, on the second bounce. So. Now the wall means, I mean, Asoya means the wall, right? And, and basically a. Uh, ver uh, certain tribal Indian language, it's, is it? It's, it's an Iroquois. I mean, when I thought about wall lacrosse, initially the game for it, or the name for it, um, I was calling wall games. Um, and I, I figured that because of a set of games, I think I'm onto something here. Um, so I really wanted to try to uh, sort of brand it or at least give it a name that was recognizable and, and, and understandable. And uh, But I also wanted to... to pay homage to the Native American heritage. And, and so the, the name for, the Iroquois name for wall I came across or, or looked up was Asoya. Mm -hmm. And uh, I figured, 
a soya would be a, an appropriate name for what, what this is. Yeah. It's kind of straightforward. We were talking off camera. You, you were telling me about the game of lacrosse, which has been around for centuries. I mean, before this country was even colonized and developed into what it is now. And you said the game is, is also a, a spiritual game. Yeah, yeah, I, I think so. I mean, what I had mentioned before was that I, there's certainly the athletic element to it um, and uh, uh, the, the heritage aspect of it. But for me, I mean, it's, it's a very spiritual game. And I find myself able to just kind of clear my head, even when I'm on the wall or just playing in general, even on the field. Uh, yeah, it, it, it certainly has a lot of spiritual elements to it. Mm -hmm. The Brooklyn Lacrosse Club has been around now five years, right? Founded right. in uh, 2012? 2012. Yeah, tell yeah. us about that. And also, you're the co-founder. Who's the other co-founder? So, so Brooklyn Lacrosse was founded in 2012 by myself and Joe Nosella. Um, Joe is also the owner, again, of Brooklyn establishment, 718 Cycles um, in Gowanus. Uh, but Joe and I met... Um, Strange enough, at, with the Brooklyn Crescents, we were both coaches there before um, uh, starting a Brooklyn Lacrosse Club. And um, yeah, did, did we one summer um, he called me up and said, "Hey, uh, you think you might want to get together and, and uh, do something for kids that are that that are all over Brooklyn, really?" Because uh, you know, I, I think we found that. Uh, we were having to travel very far to get to some of the practices where we were coaching um, prior to Brooklyn Lacrosse, and we didn't we didn't feel that we, we thought we could bring something to Brooklyn that was a little more central and have a, 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 a lot more kids involved, mm -hmm. and so Brooklyn Lacrosse started um, with that in mind, and the mission was just to really make something that was accessible, mm -hmm. and and to everyone in Brooklyn that wanted to know anything about lacrosse. Um, so we started a program that was 99 bucks, and we've kept it, you know, pretty much that price. And what is the uh, age range? Age range is from uh, kindergarten through 12th grade. Yeah, yeah, Pee Wee's all the way up to, through uh, through 12th grade. Yeah. When, when you look at the game, as far especially the teams, what you have, you have uh, various levels also. You have toddlers, midgets. Do you have those various divisions within your organization? Sh um, within what well, we call Pee Wee's, Pee's mm -hmm. what they are, and then we we. Uh, we categorize the player levels um, according to their age. So let's, you know, U8 uh, would be under 8, uh, U12, under 12, U11, under 11, et cetera, all the way up to U19. Have you noticed also the game has become much more now urbanized? I, I'm, I'm starting to see youngsters, even though it has its, you know, it's being played, it's always been played heavily in suburbia. Now the switch seems to be in cities, especially uh, across the country, up and down the East Coast. I know in Baltimore they're playing it really yep. extensively down there. In Trump the D.C. City. area they're mm -hmm. playing it down there. And here in, in Brooklyn and, and, you know, throughout the city, especially in the PSAL. Brooklyn, Harlem, uh, uh, the Bronx, it's, it's, it's everywhere. It's, it's really everywhere. Queens, um, it's penetrated the city. In, in a fantastic way, in my opinion. I mean, it's been on Long Island for a, for a very long time. And, you know, again, I think in terms of field, when you think of a city, you don't necessarily think of field space. You don't think of green spaces, you know, that are in use all the time. And lacrosse generally, traditionally has required that. Um, so, yeah, I do see it in urban, in, in urban settings now, and, and people are, are certainly um, from these areas that are that are successful in the, in the sport. And the great thing about the sport, even though there's not a pot of gold, there's our professional teams out there, and, our, and if there is a professional league, scholarships are available out the yin yang, right? Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. And I'm hoping that again, with being able to get players more access to being able to play the game, just to, to develop stick skills with a soya. Um, that they'll then be able to translate to the field and then compete for some of these scholarships. Right. And you, got, you always have to remember the Ray Jim Brown. Yes, he yeah. He's probably the greatest lacrosse player, besides being the greatest football player, the greatest lacrosse player from Long Island. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, but he played at Syracuse. Played at Syracuse. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. yo, thanks for coming. Thank you. And uh, for having me. we'll be in touch. Great.